If there's one thing we've all done a lot of this year, it's ride the same stretch of road and off-road over and over again. And in recognition of that, and the fact that the UK has some of the most diverse and brilliant trails that you can ride, we've decided to pull together several perfect places to go for a bikepacking tour to help you plan your summer holidays. Now today, I'm joined by Catherine Moore, all-round bikepacking guru, countryside lover, and self-proclaimed map nerd to join us. Hi, Catherine. Hi, thanks for having me. And today, we're gonna to be talking about the best routes you can try on your bike this summer. So we've chosen a selection of routes from across the UK for you to try and we wanted to make it as accessible as possible. So these are all quite close to major population centres. So whether it's something from your local town or city or you want to travel a bit further and it's really easy to get to by train, hopefully these will be really easy for you to follow. Now all of the routes we're talking about today are hosted on Commute where they're held together as collections created by experts up and down the country. So the easiest way to do this is go to the Discover feed on Komoot and then click on Browse Routes and Topics. So from there you can then filter them down by bike type, by region and by long distance tours. Which I think is really useful because I'm an absolute naff route planner as my riding friends will attest to. <laughs> but enough of that, let's get into the routes. So the first route that we've selected is the Trans-Cambrian Way and it's a real classic. It's 175 kilometres with just over 3,000 metres of climbing and it stretches from the English border at Knighton right the way across the heart of Wales to the Irish Sea just near McCuncliffe. Now I know that Cycling Weekly have had previous experience of this route. Why don't you tell us about it Rupert? We have indeed. The Trans-Cambrian Way was the first route Cycling Weekly ever tried bikepacking. Until that point, I don't think anybody on the team had actually done any bikepacking wow. before. So it was really jumping in at the deep end because it is one hell of a route. Um, it's absolutely stunning, but it is no small effort to do this one, which makes the challenge all the harder and the payoff even greater. Mm. And this route will take you to some of the most stunning places you've ever been on your bike. Now, if I'm to think of the standout points from this ride, um, it would be the first 15 kilometres, all uphill, uh, at quite a steep percentage as well, and all off-road. So it makes, you know, the first morning of the first day is a pretty chunky effort. But the payoff is some great descents um, off-road, and also some of the most varied scenery I think I've ever seen. You go from lush, grassy hillsides to the amazing Elan Valley in the Clarewind Reservoir, which has this sort of beautiful slate path or well, sort of gravel path I guess all the way around yeah. it it's stunning and it was raining quite a lot when we rode it but it's very atmospheric and then you kind of ride from there into this just feels like the wilderness surrounded by just sort of grass and water and no one around for miles and that was really very beautiful. You know that's why they call it the Desert of Wales. That's the Desert of Wales. It's not actually hot, <laughs> it's just deserted. And it's also not dry, I can tell, no, I can tell you really that. it's really not dry. <laughs> um, from there, you'll then pop into the Kumistwif Valley, which is basically an old village or town that's built around slate mines that are no longer in use. And it was a seriously impressive mm. piece of land to be in. Now we did the Trans-Cambrian Way in two days, so we had a one night stopover, but Komoot Route Planner, the premium version of it, actually lets you adjust the tour on there. So you can see how it would change your route and how much you do a day. If you wanted to do it more leisurely, you could put it to three or even four if you really like sleeping outside, but that might be a bit of a stretch. Or in a boffy. Or in a boffy. <laughs> Although there's only one of those apparently. No, two. Oh, you what? missed two. <laughs> <laughs> there's two boffies, which we completely missed. But absolutely feel free to toy with that to make the route fit what you want to do. Now, we rode it on gravel bikes. We had free gravel bikes. But actually, we probably would have been more comfortable on mountain bikes. But that's not to say that you can't do it on gravel bikes. Um, there's a little bit of pushing. And there are some fairly sort of exciting single track descents, um, which are better suited to mountain biking. But on the whole, you could do it on either. But there's just not a huge amount of tarmac. Yeah, in this route. I think it just comes down to personal preference mm. a lot of the time. Do you want to be fast on the tarmac or do you want to be comfortable on the descents? And with a lot of these routes, it will depend a lot personally as well as the actual terrain. Yeah, absolutely. But don't feel like you need to go and source yourself a different bike. If you've got a mountain bike or if you've got a gravel bike, you'll be absolutely fine on either of those. 
But moving on, we've done one that I'd love to try that I've never done before, which is the Wales North to South route, which Catherine, I believe you have experience of. Yeah, so this is a racing collective um, route that they put on as an event every year, but you can also ride it at any time. And it takes you from Bangor right on the top near Anglesey down to Cardiff. Um, perhaps foolishly tried to do it in only two days, <laughs> which was a real challenge. But it's, again, absolutely stunning. It takes in the Clare Wen Reservoir Road that you rode on the Transcambrian, but also some incredible slate mines further up in Snowdonia. It takes in the Gap, which people might know as a really in, like, famous mountain biking route. Um, so perhaps one that's better suited to a mountain bike. Really tough in two days, but I think would make a gorgeous tour in three. Yeah, absolutely. And it's worth saying that you know, all of these can be done a bit at a time. If you're in the area on holiday, for example, you've only got a day to ride your bike, you don't necessarily need to do all bikepacking tours as tours. Absolutely. Just the routes are superb to do on their own and you can piece them back to your accommodation. It's just amazing being out there because both of these feel like you're really, really almost on a different planet at times. Yeah. Well, they say that Wales never fails. So this is, you know. Well, exactly. <laughs> it does rain a lot though. So do <laughs> yeah. pack your wet weather gear. So the next route we're going to talk about is the South Downs Way, which is an absolute classic that I'm sure almost everyone has heard of. And it's a real famous South East bikepacking route, which I really love because I live in London and it's really accessible. It's just an easy train journey down to Winchester and then a train journey home from Eastbourne. Now we've done it in two days. You could do it in a day if you're crazy enough, or you could even do it the back to back, which I know people have done, which is, you know, there and back in 24 hours. It's mad. I don't know how you could do that, but apparently getting the gates down to Fine Art, because there's quite a lot of gates on the way, is, you know, really crucial if you want to put in a really good time on that. Yeah, and we discovered a lot of gates when we were there and we weren't <laughs> even trying to ride it quickly. Now, we didn't camp this one when we did it, uh, but there are campsites all along the South Downs way, but we actually decided to go a bit on market and we stayed in a lovely little pub but you could do it over three days and stop every night and you'd have a genuinely, absolutely lovely time. Now, there is a lot of climbing, almost 3,000 metres of climbing, but that shouldn't put you off doing it because they're steep, they're pretty hard, but um, when you get up onto the tops, it's an absolute gorgeous view. And we did it on sort of a really nice blue sky day and you could see out to sea, you could see Brighton, you could see really far inland. It is a, it's a real spectacular route. And I think it's a really good option for beginner bike packers as well because you're never that far from a village that has like a pub or a shop or even train stations along the way. So you could go and recce a day or two just as individual rides and link them together. Yeah, absolutely. Now, I understand that you've done a bit of the South Downs Way, but actually the bigger loop that it's part of, uh, which is the King Alfred's Way. That's right. Yeah. So I think we joined quite close to Butzer Hill. You might remember that one near yeah. Queen Elizabeth Country Park, which was, I have to say, a push on my behalf. <laughs> it, it, that was, it's just a it's dead just... straight <laughs> grass ascent. That If it's been raining, you have absolutely no hope of actually getting up. Yeah, everybody else I was with rode, but uh, <laughs> it just wasn't for me that day. Uh, yeah, the King Alfred's Way only came out last year, um, published by Cycling UK, the charity. And it's an incredible route because it links up not only the South Downs Way, but also the North Downs Way, the Thames Path and the Ridge Way, which is another fantastic bikepacking route, taking in an amazingly diverse number of different landscapes. You've got like the sandiness of Farnham, you've got the, the chalk of the South Downs Way and of the Ridge Way, and some really beautiful sort of forested bridleways in Surrey, and really accessible from lots of towns and cities too. And you rode that on a gravel bike or a mountain bike? Yeah, I did it on a gravel bike. I think it could go either way. I'm personally quite happy on drop bars for most things, um, but I think slightly wider tyres would be great. Um, and maybe one that's better suited to drier weather because the chalk, just like on the South Downs Way, on the Ridgeway can be really slippery when wet. And we rode the South Downs Way on gravel bikes as well, and uh, that was absolutely fine. I know people that do ride them on, or have ridden it on hardtails, but you'd be fine on a gravel bike. So again, don't go stressing. If you've got one or the other, you'll have a great time on either bike. Now, if you fancy a taste of the Southwest, 
which is my home territory, so I'm a bit biased in saying this is a fabulous part of the country, <laughs> um, then the one for you would be the West Country Way. Now, this links Plymouth down in Devon to Minehead in Somerset, crossing not only the two counties, but two national parks as well, starting with Dartmoor, which can be bleak and hostile, but also incredibly wild and beautiful, depending on what weather you have, and then Exmoor National Park, which is much greener, lots more woodland and bridleway galore. Um, but again, can be very steep. Yeah, and I've ridden a lot on Exmoor, um, and actually I prefer to take my gravel bike when I go down there because the road riding is too hard for me. <laughs> All the hills are so steep, yeah. but it does have an absolute amazing maze of bridleways to explore, either on a gravel bike or a mountain bike. You definitely have a great time if you're down there. And I think it's worth noting as well that Dartmoor is actually the only place that you can legally wild camp in England. So it could be worth just doing a bigger tour around Dartmoor because you can spend the night outside. Yeah, absolutely. Now heading further north, the next one is the Second City Divide, which, as the name might suggest, links the second largest cities in both England and Scotland, although that's a bit debated, um, with Manchester and Glasgow. So the route is just over 600 kilometres and features nearly 10,000 metres of climbing. So it's quite a serious one, although uh, it's really accessible because there's train stations both in Manchester and Glasgow and in quite a few locations in between. So you could just do it in little chunks if you wanted to. Now I did this one a couple of years ago and I can attest that it is absolutely incredible and I would recommend it to anyone. I rode it in the opposite direction to what they recommend. Uh, so actually starting in Manchester rather than Glasgow and heading north. And it was really fantastic to see the changing landscape. So you start with the conurbations just around Manchester, sort of really steep climbs and rocky parts of the Pennine Bridleway, before heading up into Lancashire, which I think is one of the most underrated places to ride a bike in the UK. And then heading north, crossing the Scottish border, which wasn't the fanfare that you'd expect. It was just a tiny little soggy path, <laughs> I think, uh, after Kilda Forest. Then after the Scottish border, it heads onto loads and loads of forestry roads, which are sort of the typical gravel you might expect. And again, in Scotland, there's the right to roam, so you can also wild camp there really freely. So staying in Scotland now, we're going to talk about the Capital Trail, which starts and finishes in Edinburgh and wiggles its way through the Scottish borders, which have plenty of very well-known mountain biking destinations. So I would recommend that you do this on a mountain bike if you have one because it will let you access some of the great trail network that is available in the Tweed Valley. Now this ride is 243 kilometers long and takes in just over 4,000 meters of climbing. And there is a lot of climbing in the Tweed Valley, but if you do the climbing, you get to access some of the best mountain bike trails in the UK. Absolutely worth a visit, even if you can only do a day's riding and can't do a bikepacking tour, definitely go and check them out because they're an absolute blast. And then on the other side, at the end of this ride, you'll ride back in through the Pentland Hills, which are another uh, national park, which is superb on the outskirts of Edinburgh because it's got heaps and heaps of mountain bike trails, gravel riding paths, and that's a bit more friendly to a gravel bike. So if you're on the skinnier tires and the drop bars, then you could just check out the Pentlands and you would have an excellent time as well. Now the one that we'd like to try in this area is a bit of a cheat because it pretty much takes in half of the country. It's the Great North Trail. <laughs> it was created by Cycling UK about two years ago and it pieces together both road and off-road routes and takes you all the way from the north of England to the tip of Scotland. Now Catherine, I understand you've done bits of it, You've not done it all and not in one go because it yeah. is 1,200 kilometres long or something. So it's obviously a bit of an epic. Any particular highlights, standout bits? Yeah, so I've done parts of the north of England route. It shares the first part with the Pennine Bridleway, which for anyone who's done it will be able to say is absolutely stunning. Um, it's pretty chunky going gravel, so I think a lot of people would probably prefer a mountain bike. And from what I've heard for the rest of the route, as you go further north into Scotland, it's definitely mountain bike territory rather than gravel bike. If you're also on the bike for that long, you're looking at a couple of weeks, perhaps even a month, then a mountain bike might be more comfortable for you. Um, but yeah, it looks incredible, doesn't it? And finishing at Cape Roth means that you can apply to Cycling UK to be part of the fellowship of Cape Roth and they will send you a certificate in the post. So you obviously could tackle it all in one go if you've 
got the time and the inclination, <laughs> but it's also one you can just piece together if you happen to be holidaying in the north of England or in Scotland. You can just take it in and have a great time bit by bit. It'd be a great project actually to do the whole thing eventually. So to round off, just a few tips from us as we've learned the hard way for beginner bike packers. Now it's really easy to bite off more than you can chew. Um, so I'd really recommend starting small and building up. You might think it's really easy to do 100k on road without any luggage, for example, and then end up with a fully loaded touring bike uh, halfway up a mountain pushing at uh, dinner time and wonder why on earth you got into that pickle. Um, it's also a really good idea to go with friends, especially friends that have done this sort of thing before because they can really help you out too. And I can absolutely attest to the fact that you will go much slower than you think you will, especially when you're fully loaded with bags and climbing off-road, expect to go at 10 kilometres an hour or slower and definitely plan accordingly. That was just one of the small things I learned on the Trans-Cambrian Way. So there you go, a selection of our favourite bikepacking and touring routes in the UK. Now, like I said, this is just a selection and there are loads more on Commute. So if you're going somewhere we haven't mentioned, then do check it out. Now, if you do get up to any of the ones we have spoken about, then we would love to hear from you and leave us a comment in the comments section below. Don't forget to give us a thumbs up and subscribe to the Cycling Weekly YouTube channel. Now we'll be back soon with some more great content and I'll see you then.